Hi, this is Tamara from Moogly, and I am hopefully coming to you today live from my basement. I am hitting refresh on my computer so I can try and see, and yes, there we are. We are live. So, hi, it's the end of September 2020, and I hope you're doing well. We're doing pretty well here at Moogly headquarters, um, dealing with all the new challenges that 2020 has brought has been interesting and fun sometimes. Um, our family actually, our big purchase, our big quarantine purchase this uh, last month or so has been, we got a telescope. So the boys are having a fun time at night now, looking at the stars and the moon and Jupiter. Uh, I guess they were able to see Jupiter last night. I missed it by the time I got downstairs. Um, the clouds had covered it, but last night they were able to see um, moons and rings and all kinds of crazy stuff. So. That's what we've been up to. Um, so I just wanted to chat a little bit and let everybody give you, give you all a chance to hit that button and tune in. So thank you so much for that. Um, hi, Jody and Thea and Virginia and Ocean Girl and Jody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Jody, great question. I don't know if that's how Thea says it, but that's how I've been saying it. So hopefully it's close. Um, so anyway, I was just over on Facebook and I was sharing, of course, all the latest updates, um, what's been happening on Moogly. Um, I've been trying to share those more here on YouTube as well, if you follow me on YouTube. And thank you so much for everybody who has liked and subscribed and hit that bell. Um, I really do appreciate it. We're at 172,000 subscribers, and I would love to hit 200,000 by the end of the year. But I appreciate each and every one of you, so thank you so much for subscribing. Um, and if you haven't, please do. Um, but I've been trying to use the community feature here on YouTube to send some messages and let you guys know about more things that are happening on the blog that you know don't necessarily happen on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you've been getting those if you're subscribed. Um, it's a new feature for me to try and use, so hopefully it'll help you guys uh, see more of the giveaways and the other things that are going on like that. Um, so thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, oh my gosh, from everywhere. Mexico, Colombia, thank you so much. Roberta, Frida, thank you for tuning in. So today, basically, I've got a ridiculously quick tip, but it's a very handy one for making perfectly straight fringe every time. And I'm not talking about cutting your own bangs. I haven't gotten that far in quarantine yet. Um, I'm just talking about cutting yarn fringe, um, which when I actually tried to Google to figure out the best way to title this video, I kept getting haircut videos. So that's why I'm, I've got bangs on my mind. Um, but no, when you're cutting yarn fringe or tassels, you want, it doesn't have to necessarily be a perfectly straight line, but I think we've all been there before where we've sat there with a pair of scissors and you trim it off and you're like, oh, well, this one's a little short, kind of like cutting your bangs. This one's a little short, you trim that one a little more, then the next one's a little too long, and before you know it, you know, you've got stubby little fringe, which can be cool, but may not be the look you were going for. So when you want to cut your fringe or you want to cut um, tassels, if you've got a whole row of tassels, you know, whatever those that big line of yarn is, and you want to get it cut nicely so that it's a relatively straight line, um, there's genuinely a very quick and easy way to do it. Took me way too long to discover, so I'm sharing it with you today. And it is by using a rotary cutter. Uh, this is one that I picked up. Oh my gosh, and I'm so sorry, my computer just died, so I'm not gonna be able to see your comments for the rest of the video. I apologize. Um, I will try and come back and answer questions in the comments later. Uh, but basically, this is a rotary cutter. And um, if you haven't used one of these before, it's basically a round scissor blade on um, a handle and it's got a protective little bit behind it here and if i pull that down then the blade you can see there is exposed and so you can run this right along a table and cut so in addition to the rotary cutter i strongly recommend that you have something some sort of safe cutting surface this is the tiniest one i've ever found uh this was actually a free sample i got at a uh at a conference back when those were still happening and uh, it's, yeah, it gets a teeny tiny one. I think they, I did find these online, um, so they do sell them. But it's a great size for a little project. Um, obviously, they have much bigger ones that would be handier for great big projects, but I grabbed this one today for demoing with. And then the other thing is something I was actually talking this morning on Facebook about. Um, a yardstick is genuinely, this one happens to be from Lowe's, it looks like, uh, you know, the home, home improvement store, wherever you want to pick one up. I love the yardstick. Here's the reasons why. Tape measures um, are floppy, as we all know. Also, they stretch out. Um, I don't know if you've ever pulled out a really old tape measure and maybe compared it to a brand new one. A lot of times, especially those first, you know, 12, 24, however often we're using it, you know, what size we're measuring, those tapes can actually stretch out a little bit. Not gonna happen with a hard ruler or yardstick. Um, the other thing, of course, is the straight edge. 
And I love having that for being able to, oh, thank you so much. We have comments again. I can see your comments. Yay. Um, so anyway, I like having the straight edge because for things like cutting, but also for blocking, it lets me, I can actually pin this right to my board um, using my blocking pins and then use that straight edge for uh, blocking my straight edges, essentially, for creating that really, really, really straight edge. So this is a great tool to have in your, maybe not in your notions bag, but somewhere in your craft room handy. So now that I've got comments back, I wanna just, we're gonna be on our little phone here, so I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. So thank you so much, Jody. yes. Um, okay, so we've got a question from Ingrid. How does one get your tassels to have that brushed, fluffy look if you've used plain acrylic yarn? Well, you can separate the plies if you want them to be really puffy like that. Um, I'm not sure about the brushed look. Some people actually do brush their yarn. I haven't done it myself before, but I know um, all about Amy has done it. She's done it on some really uh, great amigurumi that she's made. I see somebody asked, what was that small board? It's just a small cuttering board made for rotary cutters. You can get these over in um, the sewing section, which is where you'd get this as well in most, uh, you know, like Joann's or Michael's or something like that. Uh, I also link to these on Amazon. Uh, this one happens to be by Olfa, as it turns out, so is my rotary cutter by chance. Um, I met these guys at a conference. They turned out to, be real, out to be really nice. Came home, found out my rotary cutter was by them too. So uh, yeah, so I did link to, I think the same size, I don't know if it's the same brand, but a cutting board, something to protect your table essentially. These things are sharp and you don't wanna mess up your table. So basically, um, let's see, you want to, oh, and then, thank you so much about the rose Afghan Niha. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. It's a beautiful name. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. Um, so thank you so much. And then let's see. Um, and then Ocean Girl wants to know what blocking pads you recommend. Uh, yeah, I was talking about this this morning too. The blocking pads I have are not actually the ones I'd recommend. Not that mine are bad, um, they're perfectly fine, and I did recommend them years ago, but I bought them years and years ago, and uh, they've held up, everything's fine. Um, they even have coffee stains on them after all this time, totally my fault. Um, but I have seen one since that have grids pre-printed on them, you know, like the lines, basically. And if I were to start over, those were absolutely the kind I would buy now. There's several brands of those, I haven't tried those out individually. I uh, borrowed a friend's knitter's pride blocking boards once at her house um, when I needed to block something really quick. The life of a crochet designer, you know, we have emergency blocking sessions, but, um, and that was really nice, um, but I haven't tried the others to compare, but I would definitely pick one that has the pre-printed on grid now at this point. I think that's such a handy thing to have on those. I wish mine had them, but they're still functional, so I keep using them. Um, for the blocking pins, I do have a very big favorite for those. It used to be the Clover U blocking pins, and I still like those for little things. Um, but when I have a bigger space now, I really recommend these uh, rainbow knit blockers or the plain colored ones, the rainbow parts just for fun. It's the Knit Blockers by Knitter's Pride. Um, they have these combs. If I put my hand behind it, I think it's a little easier to see those tines. And they're really, really sharp. But for things like straight edges, let me hold up here, you can see how easy it is to really use your tools then to make that blocking a little bit easier. So I'm a big fan. They have these big wide ones. I only kind of have over here right now, but they also have uh, smaller ones and they usually come mixed in a box. I've got several boxes, so I actually sorted mine out into big and small, but yeah, those are what I recommend for blocking. So coming back over here to fringe, <clears throat> I've got a brand new overhead camera with a little rig thing here, so we're going to pull it over and try it out, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you guys what I'm talking about with the fringe. So let's go ahead and go to the overhead camera here. I'm going to pull it in, and then hopefully we'll get it lined up. There we go. Okay. I have to stand up a little bit and get it adjusted. So hopefully you guys can see that. This is the back of a little mug rug, and this is a pattern that I have coming out later this year. So I flipped it over to save some of the surprise. But you can see here, if I move this out, it's actually a little easier to see. This is the side I've already cut. And you know, it's is it, is it surgeon straight? No, but it is darn straight and it's certainly good enough for me. I think that looks pretty darn good. And this is just simple fringe that I did by looping the yarn through and pulling it pulling it on through and then just pulling it down like this. Since it's a mug rug, I don't expect it to get washed or anything like that. So I'm not 
you know, maybe once or twice, but not certainly every time it gets used. So uh, I'm not overly worried, but it's just the where you pull the yarn right through. And down here, you can see the ones I haven't cut at all. And this is a little sneak peek, I guess, of how I make fringe like this. I cut one really long piece of yarn, and then I just keep folding it over until I have it, you know, as many folds as I want, and then pull it right through. And there we have that fringe. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the side I still need to cut. So now the first thing, of course, you need to decide how long you want your fringe to be. I always err on going longer than I want first because, you know, you can always cut it again, but you can't put it back. That is the one thing about cutting yarn. And you can see here, I am sort of just combing it out. I just want to get those strands to be as straight and flat against the board here as I can. I'm not going to you know, iron them or block them or anything like that. I'm just going to pull it out straight. Now, if you were one of those people who really needed them totally straight, you could, you know, block those out and get them to lay perfectly straight. But then I'm going to scooch it over a little bit here so I can use that line. You can see I've got that line right there on my board, that three inch line. I'm just picking that one because it's in the middle. And I'm just going to line up the edge of my project there with that. And then I'm going to decide how long I want this fringe to be. I'm going to start at two inches. Might not keep it that long. I might cut it to one inch or even in between one of my finished project, but you know, it's kind of like the wood, measure twice, cut once. Well, we're going to do that, but we're also going to cut a little long because we can always cut again. So once you've got that yarn really laid out nice and flat, let's see. Um, and yes, I will put a link. Um, there are links to most of the stuff I'm talking about right now already on my site at the link in the description, but I will add a link to... Um, the blocking pins as well. I think that's the one thing I haven't linked today. So like I said, I'm going to go with a two inch length here and I'm just going to go ahead and line up that yardstick right on that line. And I just want to put it down carefully. I don't want to jostle or move my project at all because I really want that to be pinched in between the yardstick and the cutting surface. I don't want this to go anywhere. As Soon as that's lined up, then we're ready to cut. I can pull back that cover with one hand, and you just want to make sure you're adding a lot of pressure to that yardstick. And then just run the blade right along the yardstick. And if you feel like, you know, you didn't quite get all the way through, you can run it a couple times. Just don't move anything. Don't move the yardstick at all. And slide that blade cover back on, safety first. And then we can sweep these right out of the way. And voila! We have our straight yarn fringe. And there we are. And we can give it a little shake, get off any little fuzzy bits that might have been cut there. You can see then, when we put it down, that is a really great looking fringe in my estimation. I think this is, like I say, this is so much better than messing with a pair of scissors. You know, each little strand and lining them up one by one. These tools, having the cutting board, the yardstick from wherever, uh, a rotor has really made a big difference for me and I hope that this tip helps you guys the next time you have to make fringe as well. So we'll go ahead and go back to the other camera here. I don't want to make anybody seasick by <laughs> moving that off to the side while you're watching. Afraid. Don't know how that would uh, read to everybody's tummies but anyway yeah that's it. It's just that simple. Um, like I say this is such a time saver honestly it has made me way more likely to go ahead and add fringe to things, right? I mean, before fringe, what a pain. Now, boom, all done, perfect, perfectly trimmed off. I absolutely love it. So yeah, I hope this tip helped you. Um, I will be going back to the post that's on Moogly that's linked in the description right now and adding a link to those blocking pins for those who are interested. And I'll probably go ahead and link um, a couple of different blocking pads that I've seen on Amazon that look really good, um, as well as the ones I've tried. Um, like I say, the ones I have are fine. I think they're all probably fine. Um, always read your reviews, of course. You don't want anything that's, you know, stinky or weird. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, I would definitely, if you're getting some blocking pads, I would recommend the ones with grids if you can find them. Um, I think it's just going to be, you know, such a time saver. Then you've got, you've got your straight lines built right in. So that's always handy, right? Alrighty. So uh, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, head to the link in the description and I will go ahead and add that one as well. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. Uh, do check all the other links, you know, at that link in the description too. We've got lots of fun giveaways happening, some other free patterns. Um, and also at that link, 
I will be embedding, as soon as I get off here and can get back to my computer, I will be embedding the Facebook video I just did as well, which had some fun sneak previews, including the crochet along that's happening in October. So I hope you guys will join me for that, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you later. Have a great day, everybody.